Welcoming those of you joining us here in Corvallis. Oregon State off to a 16-6 start, the three seed at 25 and 7. Nebraska at 23 and 11, the sixth seed and down 10 early on on the road in this hostile atmosphere, sold out crowd at historic Gill Coliseum. Been a very fun start today. Welcome to your courtside. Jason Ross Jr. and Aja Ellison with you. It has been a very hot start for Oregon State. Beat Eastern Washington a couple of days ago. Nebraska survived a comeback scare against Texas A&M. Asia, the start to this game so far, what do you make of it? I mean, Oregon State, it's been all their game. They've imposed their will. They're dictating the tempo. They are playing inside and out. Beers, absolutely no answer for her. Opening up shots for guards around the perimeter, they're able to connect. Well, that matchup, Beers, Markowski, two of the top fours in the country. Going to be one to watch today. So far, what do you make of that matchup? I love it. They're grinding. They're battling in. And Markowski, she was on the bench a little bit. She's coming back in. So she's going to have to look to get some rhythm. Well, time for our Geico Get More. And it is Reagan Beers' this hot start to this game. Beers off to a hot start. I mean, she has the players that are able to pass it, get it into her. But the position that she gets, watch, she just gets in. Look at the steal here. And then she's got those soft hands, those great hands. She's able to catch and put it up. I mean, she makes it look so easy. Her prowess in the paint, absolutely no answer for her. They're going to have to find out a solution for Beers if Nebraska wants to get this win. See the numbers so far. Nebraska just 3 of 13. They call it defending the dam around here. And they're doing that so far. A hot start on the defensive end and offensive side for the Beavers. Take a look at where we are. So it's a part of the regional one in Albany. This Corvallis location, winner of this one will play the winner of Notre Dame and Ole Miss in the Sweet 16 on Friday. Oregon State in search of their first Sweet 16 since 2019. Nebraska, a couple of days ago, they picked up their first NCAA tournament win since 2014. And their last Sweet 16 was 2013. Tons of talented players on this floor. Nebraska, despite the rough start today, they have had an excellent month of March, made it to the Big Ten Tournament title game, came up short in overtime against Iowa in the final minutes. They kind of flipped that script around of how they finished against Texas A&M, winning that game by two, 61 to 59. Well, this is huge now. Beers is on the bench, so Nebraska's got to take advantage of attacking the paint. You're right, and Markowski's back in. A whistle here in what appears to be a traveling violation against Nebraska. It is. So this is going to go back to Oregon State. Our officials, Maggie Tiemann, Darren Krzyznik, and Lisa Jones. Great crew on hand here in Corvallis. Leah Von Olhoffen, a Washington native. Scott Ruick said she has the best court vision of any guard he's ever coached. He's already knocked down a three today. Kelsey Reese, who made a Sweet 16 with Utah a season ago, transferred to Oregon State in the offseason. Von Olhoffen so poised. Nice little hesitation move. Couldn't put the finishing touches on. Now Callan Haig and Nebraska with a chance to pull within single digits. If you're going to weather a storm, at least it's early if you're a Husker fan. Shelley snaps the feed down low. Speaking of good passes, but there's the length at 6'5 of Kelsey Reese. Asia, we talked about it. They, they take beers out, but hey, you put in 6'5 Kelsey Reese down low. Yeah, absolutely. The length that Oregon State has. You see the length there on the shot with Tamiya Gardner. I mean, it's just so hard to answer on both ends of the floor. Gardner is Oregon State's leader in made threes this season. Adds another on to her totals, what's so been an excellent sophomore year. She's the one passed with guarding Markowski on this end. Hake off a dribble, well off the mark. Defense to offense, that's just really been the name of the game. Why they've been so dominant, the Beavers. Look at the block here from Reese. All of that length and able to capitalize on the other end. Gardner showing her versatility. Part of an excellent sophomore class for Oregon State. And then you have a freshman dribbling the ball right now and Donovan Hunter, who is in season, made so much progression. Rare to see a point guard as a freshman in major college hoops. Dominica Perova had an excellent 
First round game, number three in white for Oregon State. She's checked in now. Go down low to Reese. Markowski disrupted that connection and it's going back to the Huskers. Now here on the other end, they missed Markowski a few times on the post up and she was telling her guards, get me the rock. Literally that's what she was saying, pass me the ball. So we're gonna see Markowski looking to get a post up. She has Gardner on her. You told me when you were posting up, you liked the high catch. Oh yeah, I love the high catch. Nothing at my feet. <laughs> She's calling for it. They get it to her. Gardner defending, slotted away from behind by Hunter though. Darian White recorrows it for Nebraska, floats it up and connects. I love Darian White. She's an X factor, a difference maker. One of the more athletic guards for Nebraska. She changes the pace and the tempo on both ends of the floor. A two-time Big Sky defensive player here at Montana State before she transferred to Nebraska. Hansford, Pac-12 leader in three-point percentage, couldn't get that one to go down. Here's the speed of White and get them up the floor in a hurry. Final minute, opening quarter, ticket to the Sweet 16 on the line today. Shelly, been so good in March, drops it off for Hake. Nice hesitation, Hake. Fouled, count that too. Such a huge difference with Beers out of the ball game, not in the paint. I love the relentless attack, how Nebraska's taking advantage. Hake receiving the ball here. Bad closeout, you punish him. You go baseline, Hake with the and one in the finish. What a momentum play for the Cornhuskers. Pulls them within single digits in the final minute of this quarter after going down double digits early in this game. Hake, a Minnesota native who played in her home state in the Big Ten tournament. Now playing in her first NCAA tournament and gets a big and one with half a minute to go in the opening quarter. Rova had a career high 17 in the first round, went over Eastern Washington, threw it away there, and Nebraska again, maybe some momentum brewing here for the Huskers. Shot clock will be off, and they'll bring Markowski in. What are you looking for with this possession? 20 seconds left. Got to continue, try to get it down into Markowski. She's the heartbeat of the offense for Nebraska, and she's a great passer as well, so she won't force a shot up. So if she can get it inside out, create some shot opportunity. And again, Beers is out right now for Oregon State on the bench. Darian White curls around, and they threw it away. Did not go off the fingertips of Von Olhoffen, so to go back to Oregon State. They forced Markowski to set up a little higher there. Absolutely. I mean, you credit the Beavers defense. They are just stifling right now, really disrupting the rhythm of Nebraska. They got to calm down. So now chess match. Markowski goes out. Beers comes in. Seven seconds to work with for Oregon State. Von Olhoffen driving to the rim. Back out of her hands by Darian White. And that'll do it for one quarter of entertaining action here in Corvallis. A 19 to 11 start for Oregon State. The Beavers up. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? These teams would love to tack a sticker on in a Sweet 16 spot after this one, but still plenty of work to do. Let's check out how they are feeling the run, brought to you by Wendy's. Had a couple of freshman X-Factors for these teams in their first round games. Dominica Parova for Oregon State was definitely one for the Beavers. Showed up and showed out from Czech Republic, put on for her country. She was absolutely outstanding, and it was her birthday, so she had this show out on the birthday, has her family here in the crowd, but Logan Nisley on the other end for Nebraska. Really surprising, not surprising though, she has veteran minutes, but she was able to connect from three, which was huge, balancing that inside-out scoring game with Markowski on the inside. The freshman, Jason, has ice in her veins. You see the two of them there. It was so fun interviewing Logan Isley after they went over to Texas A&M. You could see the genuine joy she had on her face playing in her first NCAA tournament game. And then for Dominica Parova, we got a chance to chat with her at practice yesterday, her family. Mom Aita, Dad Martin, and Sister Pavlena all here today, all the way from the Czech Republic. 
to watch her. Talia Von Ohoff in the steal. She's running with Schuler. Snaps it to her. Perova the trailer. Easy deuce. Perova, an absolute X factor. Two stars were born when you talk about the freshmen with Perova and Misty. So be on the watch for those two. Gets the Oregon State lead back up to double digits. There's a good ending to the opening quarter for Nebraska. Markowski against Beers, the matchup to watch today. Callum Hake snaps it down to Markowski. Kelly was averaging 21 points per game over her last five, entering the tournament. Floats it up here and got a nice roll. Would love to see a lot more from Jazz Shelley. She does so much. She creates, she defends, but she's going to have to put a lot of points up on the board. Added Gil Coliseum to her list of arenas where she hit trick shots in, by the way, in practice yesterday. Had a, a one-handed E from the bleachers to add this place to her list. As Von Ohoffen answers right back with a tray. Von Ohoffen is so good, a three-level score. She has a dangerous, nasty mid-range game, but we've seen her shoot a few from beyond the arc. It's a four of eight start from long range for Oregon State. Nebraska 0 of five from deep. Oh, what a pass. Oh, Parova, the finish. You said it, Jason, a tremendous pass, or I love it. That was the Chelsea Gray no-look pass. Got to be ready for it, and Parova able to finish. A dazzling display of offense early on from Oregon State, and their leaders have come to play. Markowski trying to find a rhythm. Another good defensive possession for Beers. Beers is absolutely disruptive. Beers, a sophomore who's taken such a great leap from freshman to sophomore year. The thing with this Oregon State team, they practice with such a level of humility. They want to get better. They want to embrace not knowing everything. On the court and in the film room. That's right on point, Jason. Moriarty pushing opposite away for Nebraska. It's the freshman of the year in the Big Ten pots. Couldn't quite hit the three there. And to Leah Von Olhoff in the board. There's some fans behind me, Jason, saying, get it to Beers, get it to Beers. They love it. They just know what she's able to do. Von Olhoff and took the three there. Oregon State still the 13-point edge. Kelly will drive. Good job to create space there, but couldn't finish. But I love the team. Shelly's got to be aggressive on her attack. That's the mentality you want to see out of her today. Oregon State, they've gotten it done from three, Asia, and they've also gotten it done getting up and down. Yeah, they're absolutely dictating and pushing tempo. Fast break points here. I love it. It's just textbook. They make it look so easy, and Perova just outstanding. Great finish from the freshman. Von Ohoffen will check out. Well-deserved breather. The guard depth really doesn't waver for Oregon State in terms of decision-making. I mean, they have the best bench in Pac-12 basketball, so you send players to the bench. You got more coming in ready to play. Nisley knocks down the mid-range. Again, she had 16 points in the victory over Texas A&M. Nebraska survived a 17-point comeback from the Aggies in that one. Now they find themselves trying to come back in the second round. Beers, what a catch, has such soft hands down low. There it is, the throw over. Nothing you can do about it, especially when it's coming from the top of the key. That's just hard, help side decision there. Petrie in down low now for Nebraska. She played some early minutes on Friday when Alexis Markowski got into foul trouble. Markowski on the bench. We've seen multiple substitutions with her so far in the opening half. White with six on the shot clock. What a floater there. White, an absolute difference maker. I think for Nebraska, too, whoever Beers is guarding, they're going to have to set a lot of on-ball screens and just try to get her out of the paint as much as possible. You told me it, it doesn't really matter even where you throw it down to Beers. She just catches so easily with those soft hands. Such Hansford. a luxury. A luxury to have a player like Beers with hands. You could just throw it wherever she's going to catch it and put it up and score. So tough to defend. Going to go back to Oregon State.
Nebraska, they just have not been able to find rhythm, consistency offensively. What do you think needs to happen for Nebraska to do that? I want to see more ball screen action. Beers, you got to get her out of the paint. She'll sit there and that help on the ball screen to the guards. They'll be able to attack and bigs. They just got to be shot ready. Marat. Here's a chance to get within single digits for Nebraska. Ended the first quarter on a high note. Can they end the final minutes of the second quarter on a high note? Bo made a nice move. Foul here. Looks like it's going to be against Potts of Nebraska. The Beavers will get it back. Oregon State up 11. Fun start to this one. Ticket to the Sweet 16 on the line. Sold out crowd. Great day for hoops here in Corvallis. Thanks out. Well, back here in Corvallis, Asia, like the crew in the studio said, already had a two seed go down today with Ohio State. Duke, you're keeping an eye on that one. You've seen Duke this year up and down. They came to play today, though, in that second half. Reagan Richardson with 28. She is an absolute problem. No answer for her. She can hit it from outside. She can go in. She can drive. So no surprise at all there, Duke. They're very talented and a young team with such a high ceiling. Here's Scott Ruick, as the crew pointed out, watching his team rack up the assists on made field goals for the Beavers. Looks like this will go back to Nebraska. Look at the assist difference, ball movement, such a connected Beaver team. Nebraska has excellent chemistry as well. Like you said, though, to me during commercial break, they just haven't quite finished the opportunities consistently enough today. Travel called here will not start with that. Margin for error becomes slimmer and slimmer as you get deeper into these tournament games. And you credit, I mean, you talk about Nebraska not finding that rhythm offensively. You really have to give the Beavers their credit for their defense. I feel like it's not talked about enough. Coach Ruick, he prides himself on the defense. That's where he wants to start the foundation, and the Beavers have been showing all that tonight. Good defense down low from Nebraska there. Talk about that defense for Oregon State. He feels you see Donovan Hunter on your screen there. Reagan Beers, the steps they've taken defensively. Talia Von Olhoffen, who you might expect to check back in soon here. That defensive improvement has been pivotal in getting back to the NCAA tournament this year. Both of these teams missed out on the tournament last year. Back in business this year in March. Trying to get to the Sweet 16. I mean, you got eyes on the court look, and you look at the matchups, look at the length that the Beavers have outside and in. It's been absolutely disruptive. Disrupting shots like you see here. Scott Brewer liked, liked how Texas A&M disrupted, that word disrupted, Nebraska in the first round matchup, kind of patterning after what the Aggies did for a good chunk of that game. They wanted Beers down low. They get it to her and she gets fouled. Absolutely smothering defense and the freshman Donovan Hunter. That's textbook right there. Move your feet, slide, beat him to the spot. Absolutely disrupted Darian White's shot. That's the name of the game, the length. Murat, a really good shooter for Oregon State, came up short there. Six of these Nebraska players were on their prior NCAA tournament team. Logan Nisley was not one of them, made her tournament debut a couple of days ago. Coley was fouled on that possession. Alexis Markowski right now, Jason, only two points here thus far in the first half. One of seven from the field. She averages a double-double, just under 16 points per game, 10 boards. Has been a walking double-double this season, 19 all year. Beers has 15 double-doubles this season. Those two matched up against each other right now. Nisley, there was a whistle before the shot. And this is going back to Oregon State. I get a foul on Markowski. Would be her second. 
That's huge. Second foul, Markowski in the first half. All the moving screen. Ooh. Uh. Not where you wanted to pick up that foul. Absolutely not. And especially for it to be Markowski. And she's going to have to be careful in this possession here. Shelly, her good friend, gets the rebound. Shelly and Markowski have such a good rapport with one another. Well, look at Markowski working. Against Beers. Double goes up. Just the vision was disrupted again. Now back come the Beavers. Prova. They've been operating well in transition. Blacklock was in rhythm. Beers an offensive board. Hunter with the loose ball. Floats it up. Came up short. Markowski a much needed Husker rebound. This Lee got that up and was fouled by Blacklock. So free throws on the horizon here for Logan Nisley, who had a couple of huge free throws with 14 seconds left in their first round win over Texas A&M. So Markowski holding the screens, how you learn from your mistake the first time around, and that's just a veteran player right there, not picking up a third foul. Hake. Hey. Checks in for the Huskers. Along with Stewart, Markowski goes out. There's the matchup we highlighted in the open. Markowski and Beers. I think it's, at some point, Markowski will find a way to get going. She has all season long. That's why her perimeter players, those guards, they're going to be absolutely key because Beers having her in the paint, that's going to be a tough one. So those perimeter players are going to have to step up, whether they're attacking or knocking down shots. From the perimeter. Hank took the charge, fired up after it. This will go back to Nebraska. A minute 48 to go in the opening half. A window here for the Huskers. She's made a few of those hustle plays in their first matchup, just right there on time. Hake sacrificing her body. Lily Hansford checks in for Oregon State. Last time Nebraska made a Sweet 16, it was 2013. They were coincidentally a sixth seed that year as well. Shelly slipped it back out for Stewart. Good look. They worked on that in practice yesterday. Actually stayed after practice working on that look. Yeah, I was going to say they stayed after those two specifically working on that exact play. The pick to the pop, which is going to be needed. Stewart able to knock that down. And then the steal from Missley. Their star freshman in this tournament so far. Up ahead, Shelly to the rim, drops it off. Stewart again. That connection couldn't quite turn into two this time. But they're within seven with a minute to go in the opening half. Six seed Nebraska, three seed Oregon State, sold out Gill Coliseum. Have the length of Coley here on Hansford. Four to shoot for Von Ohoff. Got that up. Long rebound, and it is hauled in by the Huskers. Callan Haight. Oregon State's missed their last seven. It's a 6-0 Nebraska run. Gill Coliseum up trying to implore their team to get a stop. Four-second difference game clock and shot clock. Nice perusing here from Haight. Just came up short. Offensive board, though. Didn't hit rim. Shot clock is off now. That was blocked by Von Ohlhoffen. And will they count that will be the question mark. They're going to review it. Kendall Coley with the big shot potentially at the end of the half. We'll take a look at it.
a really good contest. Try to see when it leaves their hands. And the light on the backboard, the red light is what you're looking at. Did it leave her hands before that went off? Appears to still be in her hands at zero. The last basket has officially been waved off. So they will not count that. We reviewed the end of score at the end of the period. After review, we have determined that the ball was not shot prior to the expiration of time. No basket. Well, it's half. We'll take you to Dove in the studio with Elle, Rebecca, and Andrea. Coming up next. Welcome to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Second round matchup, Oregon State and Nebraska, the three seed versus the six seed, trying to advance to the Sweet 16 today. And been a really fun start to this one so far. Jason Ross Jr., Asia Ellison with you. Courtside here at Gill Coliseum in Corvallis. Asia, it was a, a 6-0 run to close out the opening half for Nebraska on a high note. What they want to get going, though, if you're a Cornhusker fan, is Alexis Markowski. Now, you got your star player just two points right now. Very disruptive, so you do have to credit Oregon State's length. Beers in the paint. And let me tell you something. Beers, she is not leaving the paint, so they're forcing Alexis Markowski to shoot those outside shots, which she's worked on in practice, but not able to hit them right now. 0 for 3 from the three-point line and 1 for 8 from the field. So you talk about the disruptive Look at the hands corralling the paint. Oregon State, you got to credit their all, their defensive prowess right now, just taking everything away from the heart of Nebraska's offense. So Markowski, she's going to have to get things going for Nebraska to find some life. And Nebraska did pull within seven after drilling by as much as 13 in that opening half. You see Oregon State ended the second quarter in a drought. So can they dig their way out of that? Should be a really intriguing third quarter of action. Oregon State went 25 and seven this year leading up to this matchup. Nebraska, a 23 win season. Both teams back in the NCAA tournament. There's Amy Williams, head coach for Nebraska who played for the Huskers in the 90s. Actually played against Oregon State as a player for Nebraska and now coaching after picking up her first NCAA tournament win as a head coach in Nebraska on Friday against A&M. There's Scott Ruick. He told us yesterday it was his dream to build this atmosphere here in guild coliseum for women's basketball remembered watching it in the 80s when he did his undergrad here at oregon state saying to himself when he went to men's games i want women's basketball to look like this one day and now it does living his dream as head coach of oregon state it should be a really fun second half I mean, the culture that he's established here, he said that these fans, they love these girls and they want to come out and support night in, night out, day in and day out. And this is just such a wild, crazy atmosphere. Both of these coaches know what their fan bases feel in every moment because they are a part of their fan base, truly. Gardner, leader in made threes for Oregon State this season, was looking to get the Beaver lead back up to double digits there. Now, Oregon State, they got a little dry uh, towards the end in that second quarter. They got to continue to get the ball into Beers. I mean, that's the beast right there. And Beers, she has the IQ. If the help side comes, she'll throw it out if she has to. But you got to get it into the paint. It's worth inside out. Beers versus Markowski, the matchup to watch down low. Instead, it's Gardner. Couldn't cash in this time. A little strong. Moriarty the rebound. Flip it over for Nebraska. What are you looking for out of them on this end? They got to get Markowski going. Right on cue, tried to get a three, couldn't, but she can hit from that spot, as you pointed out earlier. Markowski averages just under 16 points per game, but just two right now. Donovan Hunter, the poised point guard for Oregon State. Beers versus Markowski. And just couldn't get the roll. Again, Nebraska trailed by 13 in that opening half. Took the first punch, countered though in the final five minutes of the second quarter. Shelly ran into a lack of real estate down low, turned it over. They'll want that possession back. Beers is making such a huge difference. She is not leaving the paint whatsoever on the defensive end. Got her deep positioning. 
Maybe a little too deep down low there, though. Lionel Hoffman, the fake, the drive, kicks it out. Marat, good shooter in the corner. Short there, both teams still looking to get, off the, get the lid off the basket in this third quarter. Shelly, sneaky feed, and a nice cut from Markowski. There we go, I love it. Never giving up on offensive play. Markowski just continuing the move. We saw her spot up there. She caught Beers slipping, falling asleep a little bit defensively, so cut right behind her. Oregon State has missed 12 straight shots dating back to the first half. We have ourselves a two-possession game after the Beavers are up 13. Nearly a steal from Shelly. Von Ohoffens pull up, much needed for the Beavers. Oregon State 17-2 on this floor this season. Only two losses came without beers. They have officially set a new single season attendance record here in Corvallis for women's hoops. The drive from Nisley, strong Markowski there on the doorstep for the board. There we go, Markowski, that's how she can get it. Get on the glass, try to maximize as much opportunity, opportunistic plays as she can possible. Five-point game. Gardner couldn't stretch out the lead. Good contest, and now Shelley. Natalie Pox, Big Ten Freshman of the Year, blocked down low by Gardner. Blocked again! That's a freshman move right there. Potts has got to get it out, reset the offense. Those two match up against each other on this end, too. Gardner and Potts. They get it to the corner. Gardner, third chance at a three this half. Couldn't hit. And then a foul over the top. A foul that Beers will definitely want back. <laughs> Time for our need to know. Brought to you by Dick Sporting Goods. So mentioned Oregon State's prowess at home this season. And today's attendance, 7,227. Gill Coliseum postseason record. Such a great day. Such a great season, such a great year for women's hoops. And continuing today here in Corvallis. Packed house for a big game. Darian White's back out of the court for Nebraska. I love her in the game. She changes the speed. She's going to put a lot of pressure on the Beavers one-on-one -on -one defense. Stewart followed her own miss. Gardner there for the rebounds. Kennedy Schuler running the point right now is checked in for Oregon State along with Kelsey Reese. So they've swapped in four beers. So keep an eye on the matchups down low. Markowski gets a breather while Beers gets a breather. Von Ullehoff in corner three. Got it. And Darian White was right there to contest the shot. We talk about the length. Ullehoff in the quick trigger. The Nebraska counter, this is a play they work on a lot, turned into two there. Both coaches up on their respective sidelines, down to a six-point differential. Uh, near steal, Darian White tied it up, and possession arrow is going to go back the other way. It'll be Nebraska ball when we come back. Tight game. Where else would you want to be on a Sunday afternoon? Ticket to the Sweet 16 on the line. Oregon State and Nebraska. We were so pumped up for this one. It's living up to the hype. Going to take you back here. February 16th, UCLA versus Oregon State. Talia Von Olhoff, and in front of 8,525 people, buries the buzzer beater. She has risen to the occasion all season long in big moments. There were four lead changes in the final eight seconds of that insane Pac-12 game. And she is our most reliable player, brought to you by Xfinity. Yeah, you talk about a certified bucket getter. That is her right there, Talia Von Olhoff. And Shot is so pretty again. She can score at all three levels, and she's the player that can break Oregon State if they're going dry. She's the go-to player that can get them back to life on the offensive end. Such a fun player to watch. 
She won a state title as a high school player in Washington. Her and this Oregon State team have big dreams. And she's a great defender as well, Jason. Really embraces that end. Callan Hake, short, Von Olhoffen, look who it is, right on cue, right on the doorstep for the rebound. Darian White, a two-time Big Sky Defensive Player of the Year at Montana State at the task of guarding Von Olhoffen. Five to work with for Von Olhoffen. And that one goes out of the reach of Gardner, not the possession that Oregon State wanted there. The NCAA Championship Final Four weekend, speaking of big dreams, it starts April 5th at the Final Four and continues Sunday, April 7th, when we crown a champion. Every game is on the ESPN family of networks. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. Nebraska group made the NIT last season. Used that as motivation right away to get back to this stage. It was unfinished, unfinished business, specifically Jazz Shelley, who just had the ball, it was a key factor in coming back and motivating this team to get here. They've come back from down 13 today, within six now. That shot from Darren White coming off the ball screen, she, all she needs is one dribble pull up. She went a little too far into the defense, right into the help. Perova in for Oregon State. She was a big X factor for them in a Friday win over Eastern Washington in the first round. 73-51 victory for the Beavers. Celebrated her birthday too on Friday. She'll kick it out here to Marat. Three on the shot clock. It's down again for the Beavers. Beavers got the rebound, but they did get a foul before the rebound. Crowd doesn't like it, but it's going back to Nebraska. I'm not sure how I felt about it either. I think they got her maybe for a push off under the rim. They're going to get her with the push off arm bar. That's her third foul. Oh, I love it. They're going to be aggressive. They're going to look to attack Beers with three fouls right now. Hook shot that Markowski worked on a lot in the offseason. Didn't drop. Had the look they wanted. Like you said, we'll see if they keep attacking Beers down there. Comes out to Hedge. Rover thought about it. Good recovery from Hake. Now Perova, who drained threes on Friday, couldn't knock one down there. Hake and the Huskers trying to run a little bit. This league transition three. Around and out. Reese got entangled down there with Coley, and it's a foul on Nebraska. Have another look at it. This league with the shot and watch Cooley and Reese down there. And Reese got tripped up on the feet of Cooley as she was coming down for the rebound. Oregon State with just five points in this quarter. It was an electric start for the Beavers on their home floor. Jump down low to Beers. You need points, that's where you go. That's why you got to do your work early. Markowski was caught up on the high side. Great seal by by Beers, but that help side, help side has to be there earlier. That was Jessica Petrie. Watch, Jessica Petrie has to be there a lot earlier to at least give a little bit of disruption to Beers' shot. Have another look at it. Markowski gets caught high. Look how late the help side is there. Beers is punishing you every time. 15 double-doubles for Beers this season. She not only has the soft hands catching the ball, then the force down low. Away from basketball, she's an artist, really into creating pottery. Started doing that as her good friend Tamia Gardner, who she came in to Oregon State with, gets the rebound.
100 seconds to go in the third quarter, six-point game. Six on the shot clock for Donovan Hunter. Gardner against Petrie. Got a foul call here. Looks like it's on Nebraska. Right as the shot clock was dwindling down. Third on Petrie. Look to run this, execute on the sideline, out of bounds play. Better believe it's going in to number 15 and white right here. Yep, you called it. Not much you can do with that. The way she gets her position, ducks in her footwork, it is unstoppable. She's in double figures with 10. Crowd loves it. Foul called away from the ball on Oregon State. Every single time, offensive execution for the Beavers, a luxury to have a player like Beers that can get position. It is just so tough. How do you even guard that? you got to do your work early. There has to be help side. That was the fourth foul, by the way, on Reagan Beers. Nebraska quickly capitalizing off that inbound. Beers in right now with four fouls. Kelsey Reese is at the scores table. Going to more than likely check in for Beers. Even going into the fourth, that's huge. It is. So very big development. Markowski, Gardiner, six on the shot clock here. Prova lost it. Markowski up to Shelley, her partner in crime. Oh, they got to look. They got to attack Beers. They get the signal from Amy Williams on the sideline. See what they do here. Still ample time to work with on the shot clock. Yep, they're going to look, try to see if they can get Markowski. Instead, Petrie takes a three. Oh, it was tapped into the hands of Nisley, who came running in. Now shot clock's off on the third quarter, down to three seconds left. Short, and that'll do it. That heave won't count. Nonetheless, six-point game. After three, heading into the fourth. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Fourth quarter on the horizon. So you're going to take a look at a play here. This was Nebraska's last possession when they scored to pull within six. Reagan Beers, you can see she tried to check out, thought that she could get out with Kelsey Reese coming in. And then Markowski scores pretty easily, essentially a five on four. We were told, Asia, that there was no problem with her checking out. It, it is if the player is at the table when we administer the throw in. So apparently there they had already administered the throw in and Reese was not there at the scores table yet. And after that, there was no stoppage of play either. So Beers had to continue to play. So for Nebraska, you have to go at her with four fouls. And then even with that last shot with Markowski, she shot a fadeaway short jumper. If I'm going at Beers, you've got to go at her hard. You've got to try to draw contact and get another foul. That was our Star Stories brought to you by Honda. Buckle up, fourth quarter. Two possession game. Third quarter was a pretty defensive battle. What does the fourth quarter have in store for us here in Corvallis with a ticket to the Sweet 16 on the line? Nebraska hasn't been to that stage of the tournament since 2013. Oregon State trying to get back there for the first time since 2019. Hansford is calling for it. Gets closed from Nisley. And they get a foul called on Nisley. Looks like she might have inadvertently Hit Hansford in the face there. Just the first for Nisley, who's been big in the postseason for Nebraska, especially in the Big Ten tournament, and their win over Texas A&M in the first round. No beers on the floor to begin the fourth for Oregon State. You wonder when she'll check in, has the four fouls. And this is huge for Oregon State's offense. Her prowess in the paint, but her ability to ball screen. But it seems like it's absolutely no problem. Hansford, the three-point sniper. That's a 48% three-point shooter, Lily Hansford, 
drills a ginormous three to begin the fourth. You got to take advantage here. No beers. Markowski needs to be posting up all day. They need to look for her. Pot still trying to find her game offensively. Oregon State could go back up double digits here. Instead, what do we get? A foul called on Nebraska. Have another look. They call the foul here on Potts on the post up. It's hard to see from that angle, but I did see it. She got her on the grab on the arm as Gardner was trying to seal up. Von Ohlhoffen liked the space that she had and drilled a three. Von Ohlhoffen is hot and she is feeling it. Rip away from Hunter. Fifth time over the last decade that Oregon State has hosted first and second round. This crowd has showed out for this second round game. Nebraska will take that right back. Nisley on the move. And she is fouled from behind. Von Olhoffen so icy ice in her veins. She is feeling it. She is hot clutch certified bucket getter. We talked about it. This is the go to player that can hit shots when needed. And she is feeling it. Beavers haven't lost to a opponent not in the Pac-12 this year. This league had a really nice cut there, but the pass just wasn't quite on cue. Would have probably been two if it was. Well, the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship second round continues tonight on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. For more information on tournament game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. Von Ohlhoffen, different side. Couldn't quite hit that time. Now back comes Shelley. Potts, again a good contest from Gardner, who has been spectacular on that end of the floor today. Foul pulled on Nebraska. They get Potts, a frustrating afternoon for her so far. Potts and Gardner have just been going at it possession by possession. Have another look here, Potts. Yeah, Potts was pushing her out of control, trying to catch up with Gardner on the breakout. Potts just 0 of 7 today, a player who has been really special for them all season long. Hook it to the corner, Gardner, their leader in threes, buries it. Oregon State lead is at its largest of the afternoon. Forty-four twenty-nine. Beavers up in Corvallis. On ESPN, the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship second round continues. Syracuse and UConn, West Virginia, Iowa, and Kansas versus USC. Some serious star power in these matchups. Yet Paige Beckers, Caitlin Clark, Juju Watkins, all will be on display. That Syracuse team that Paige Beckers is going to play, they surprise people this year, really building something there. It's going to be some fun games. It's going to be a fun game. I got my eye on that 6-3 matchup with Syracuse and UConn. We cannot forget about Deja Fair, the guard from Syracuse, putting on Coach Jack. Syracuse has been doing absolute great things this season. And Tia Gardner, how about her? She's been doing great things as well. I love it. The biggest cheerleader, Reagan Beers, when she's not a beast on the court, a cheerleader on the baseline. And we're just seeing the bench, how dynamic the offense is for the Beavers. Everybody getting a piece of the pie. Love seeing that. Beers had the injury scare in their round one win 
over Eastern Washington. Didn't play down the final stretch, but she was their biggest cheerleader on the bench, and she did get back on the bench as a much-needed bucket goes in off the glass for Shelley. And now Beers with the four fouls still on the bench, but her sophomore partner in crime, who she actually played in the same Jordan Brand Classic game with when they were in high school, has been going to work. Here is Gardner. Reese was in a Sweet 16 last year with Utah, nearly beat the eventual national champ LSU. Now trying to guide Oregon State to a Sweet 16 this year. Gardner in the corner. Markowski the rebound, still time for Nebraska for six and a half to go. Can they strike quickly though and go on a run? Shelley, she's been playing her best basketball in March. Only to her and Markowski to step up down the stretch here. Hansford, 48% from three. Only the rebounds, and here comes Darian White. They worked on that in practice yesterday, that same play on the roll, and Coley capitalizes. They're going to have to continue to work on those plays in their offensive sets, just trying to get easy rolls to the basket because Oregon State's doing a good job forcing those outside shots. Nebraska 1 for 15 from 3 and 15 for 53 from the field. Lots of those outside jumpers that they've been missing. If you can get a stop here, if you're a Nebraska fan, then the next possession you could possibly pull within single digits. Approaching the final five minutes of this second round game. Reese in trouble. Here it is, chance to pull within single digits now. Go up quickly. Shelley blocked by Hansford. It's that length. Eighth rejection for Oregon State today. I mean, you think you have the breakout with Jazz Shelley here, but the length from Hansford. Lily Hansford standing at 6-1. Got so much length at the guard position, able to guard inside and out, and able to get up and block it. Hansford, one of seven returners on this Oregon State team this year. Six freshmen as well. Nisley, a nice drive. Speaking of freshmen, she has sparkled in her freshman year. I love it. Nisley has a bit of a foot speed advantage on Hansford and actually took advantage of that possession, getting to the other side. Nebraska, she goes down. Yeah, Nebraska bench wanted a foul. Nisley still struggling to get back up. Now she's back in the play, but hobbling a little bit. White fouled because of that. And Nisley still recovering from that last sequence that Nebraska's still asking for a foul. Here it is, they get a little tangled up. And Nisley goes down, hope that she's okay. We'll be back in a sec here in Corvallis. All right, let's bring one of, the, one of the best in the business, our ESPN rules analyst, Lisa Mattingly, Hall of Fame official, 18 Final Fours, 10 title games. Lisa, we want to look at this last play where it appeared to be a foul on Oregon State's Talia Von Olhoffen as Nisley went down. What were your thoughts on this play? Hey, uh, great question, and it's, it's right that they're reviewing this play. I wish we had come away with an offensive foul here because uh, I think that's all that it is. It's not an intentional act, not unnecessary. She's just trying to, to make a basketball play. Uh, but now that they're at the monitor, they can't now call this a personal foul since they had no whistle on it in the first place. The only thing that would have been possible is an upgraded play, intentional or disqualifying, which it, I don't believe that it is. Thank you, Lisa. As you noted there, great point that they can't now call that a personal foul, and it appears as though it's going to remain not upgraded in any sense. So we'll play basketball 44-35, 4.53 to go in this fourth quarter, Oregon State. Minutes away, but still many moments away from a potential Sweet 16. And that one will go off of Parova. And Nebraska has pulled within single digits. Trailed by as much as 15. Still plenty of time to go in this one.
Markowski is getting set to check in, talking with Amy Williams right now by the scores table. Stewart came up just short, had a good look, then got called for a foul. It was a good look. It's a great look, and Stewart's going to leave Markowski back in the game. And Beers, by the way, still on the bench for Oregon State with the four fouls. Wonder when she'll come back in as Oregon State is in the bonus now. Mia Gardner started to heat up in this second half. Also an 84% free throw shooter. See the story by quarter in this matchup. Really defensive third quarter. But allowed for Nebraska to work their way back in it. They were within five at one point. Now down 11 after the free throws. Markowski blocked by Gardner. Ninth block of the game for Oregon State. Reset that matchup. Take two. Markowski couldn't get that to go down. That length. It has been so disruptive at every single position for the Beavers. We said to each other between commercial break, it doesn't feel like anyone has scored on Tamia Gardner today. Oh, absolutely not. She's got the length, she's got the foot speed, the lateral movement, her timing on the block is exceptional. Long three. Oh, Von Ohoffen. And Gil Coliseum loves it. Nebraska needs an answer. White trying to give them that answer, and she does. Back to a 12-point game, 324 to go. Quick Nebraska timeout. Talia Von Olhoffen is just absolutely feeling it. The sophomore with the ice in her veins has not let up. Got to find an answer for her. She's just absolutely feeling it, but then Nebraska just not letting up. We talked about her white, an absolute X factor. Very energetic, animated timeout there for Nebraska. 3.24 to go. Still plenty of time. Oregon State on the flip side. Scott Ruick in the midst of that huddle with this team that he has loved coaching this season. Back in the big dance. Just been an amazing atmosphere. Such a fun afternoon. These two teams would play the winner of Ole Miss versus Notre Dame in the Sweet 16. Backward pressure here for Nebraska. Do you like this? I love it. Change up, switch up, get the energy going. Nebraska, for them to chip out this game, they're going to have to get stops to score. They can't keep trading baskets. It opened up Hansford, a 48% three-point shooter in the corner. Hate trying to answer. Blocks. Tenth block of the game for Oregon State. Von Ohoffen trying to settle it down. Nebraska wanted a foul. All this, by the way, with Beers on the bench for the entirety of this fourth quarter. First time these teams have met in 20 years. A lot of these players weren't born when these teams met in 2004. Von Ohoffen, same spot. That one doesn't go down. Porova tried to save it, and it's going back to Nebraska. Still a great shot there for Von Olhoff, and even though she didn't make it, the Beavers are just on fire. Seem to be getting everything that they want, and like you said, Beers on the bench. That just shows how dynamic and how talented this team is all around. That was nearly stolen, then a foul called on Von Olhoff, and her effort has just been contagious for Oregon State all season long. They follow after her example on this end. Second 
17 points, eight dimes, five rebounds for Von Ohoffen today. Markowski denied again down low. That's been the storyline of the game. The interior defense for the Beavers. Defending the dam, as they like to say around here. They've done it today. Looks foul called on Shelley. Now the 87% free throw shooter, Von Olhoffen, headed to the line. Former five star recruit, Von Olhoffen, who had surgery this time last year when they weren't in the NCAA tournament. Fast forward a year, a huge performance, and minutes away, they can feel a sweet 16. The biggest cheerleader on the bench in this fourth quarter, Reagan Beers, their sophomore sensation, who hasn't played in this quarter with the four fouls, but it's worked for Scott Ruick and Oregon State. Shelley, called glass. So Jazz Shelley, and they nearly force a turnover in the backcourt. Nebraska team has played with a lot of resilience in March. Survived a 17-point comeback on Friday from Texas A&M. Tried to flip the script today with a comeback of their own. The time dwindling on that comeback effort. Hansford. Hake crossed over and then drained the three. So back-to-back -back Nebraska threes within 11. Trying to get a steal on the backboard is the next goal if you're a Husker fan. But Oregon State cleanly gets it across. Parova, Gardner, two more. An Oregon State timeout with 1.02 to go. They're 62 seconds away from celebrating. Let's take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance. Kalia Von Ohoff and who else? And the sophomore has been absolutely on fire, connecting from beyond the arc. Kalia Von Ohoff and 19 points and shooting an efficient floor game for the Beavers. We talked about her court vision, how she's able to create for others, but when she has to step up and get a bucket, that's exactly what she can do. Ice in her veins has showed up and showed out in this matchup. Scott Ruick in the midst of that huddle dreamed of getting this program to new heights when he took over in 2010. 11 and got this program to a final four in 2016. One of the best postseason coaches that you'll find in college hoops. So calm and collected always as well. They put one more second on the clock, 103 left. Foul called. Looks like it's on Hunter. 53.2 to go. Again, winner would go on to play either Ole Miss or Notre Dame in Albany. As Shelley gets fouled here. Shelley, a grad student from Australia who actually began her career down the road in Eugene at Oregon. And she really classified that stage of her career as being a student. There's her with Sabrina Ionescu. She asked to room with Sabrina to try to learn from her. 
And she said one of the biggest takeaways that she had from Sabrina was just being able to attack the ball screen defense. And Sabrina Inescu, for those who remember when she was at Oregon, she was a puppet master when it came to attacking the ball screen. Obviously now in the league, she's expanded her range, so we see her shooting as well. So such a great mentor for Jazz Shelley. Shelley came back for another year to try to help this Nebraska program get back to the tournament. They achieved that goal and won on Friday against Texas A&M. But Oregon State putting the icing on the cake right now of what will be a second round victory. Here in Corvallis, Stewart carries a three. These guards for Oregon State so poised no matter what situation you put them in. Hunter gets trapped and fouled. 23.1 to go for Scott Ruick and Oregon State. <laughs> Moriarty checks out for Nebraska. Nisley back in. Barring a very, very special comeback in the final 23 seconds. You see that bench there for Oregon State. To your point earlier, Asia, that bench may be the reason why this team has a ton of potential in this tournament moving forward because we saw it in this fourth quarter with Beers in the four foul trouble. The teams that find the most success are those that are deep, those that not only have, go deep into their bench, but those players come in and make a difference. 10 seconds left, Shelley was fouled hard. It was inadvertent as Von Olhoffen was coming down on a contest. Good sportsmanship there between the two guards that have played their hearts out today. This Nebraska team, again, coached by Amy Williams, recently was given a contract extension so well deserved. She is an excellent coach, amazing person, celebrated a birthday in addition to the Friday night victory over Texas A&M. Her family here, they've had a season that really excelled when it mattered most in March, got all the way to the Big Ten tournament title game, came up short in overtime against Iowa, flipped that script of losing in the final minutes around in their win over Texas A&M. It's a program and a team with a bright future ahead. Jazz Shelley came back for another year. They have loved her leadership. Another one of the great personalities that you'll meet in this sport. She was all Big Ten second team. Amy Williams told that she earned the right to play with the confidence that she played with this month. Off on the second free throw. Tie up. With 8.6 to go in this fourth quarter. AJ Marat checks in for Oregon State. This crowd loves it. A bucket down low from Potts. Nebraska still bringing some pressure, and Oregon State wants to talk over how they're going to get it in here with still 7.1 to go. Trying to avoid any mistakes down the final seconds here. If you're uh, a fan of Pac-12 hoops, get another Pac-12 team coming up later. Stanford and Iowa. States in Palo Alto, Cameron Brink, Audie Crooks. How about Audie going for 40? Audie Crooks is one of the most slept on post players in the country right now. And you saw her performance against the Maryland Turpin. So if you weren't talking about her then, you are talking about her now. And I love it, Jason. How about all of these matchups where the front court is just absolutely dominant? She had some great interviews as well after that game that I highly recommend going to watch. Right now, Oregon State, who fell in the Pac-12 tournament semifinal to Stanford, 
They learned from that game before tournament play began. And now trying to finish out the closing moments of this one. Quick foul. Oregon State back in the tournament after a two-year hiatus. Tania Gardner's performance today has been nothing short of special. 15 points, four blocks. They just couldn't score on her down low today. Oregon State's final game on this floor this season will be their 18th home victory. And I'll tell you what, they definitely put it all out here on the floor. All sets has some strengths of their game on display on both ends of the floor. We talked about how impressive we were with their length and how disruptive they've been on the defensive end, but then you talk about the offense, different players able to step up and score the basketball, even with beers on the bench. After us, Alabama and Texas will go head to head. See some of the numbers here. A lot of defense versus some great offense. And that could be an interesting matchup. We've already seen one upset today, Duke over Ohio State. Colorado beat Kansas State. That was a 5-4. Middle Tennessee gave LSU a game through three quarters. Saw so Alexis Markowski on the bench there. The Lincoln native who had such a great season. Four seconds left. The seconds are going to dwindle down. And an Oregon State team that was picked to finish 10th in the Pac-12 preseason poll is going to the Sweet 16. After a two-year hiatus, how proud the Beavers are of themselves. The fans out here to support. They are going to Albany to continue the dance. This crowd that was absolutely incredible loves it. And you see the ticket that has been punched for the three seed, Oregon State, in this regional one in Albany. Awaiting the winner now of Notre Dame versus Ole Miss. Well, this was fun, Asia. Had a blast. Oregon State comes out on top 61-51 for our producer, David Feldman, director, Jason Moon, outstanding crew here in Corvallis. I'm Jason Ross, Jr. for Asia Ellison, saying so long. Send it to our NCAA Championship Studio.